Martin Dwyer has just won the Coral Coronation Cup on pile driver, and you just said, Martin, the significance of this race, there are so many significant aspects to it, but one of them for you personally is that you've now won all three Group 1 races here at Epsom. That's something to cherish. Yeah, for sure. I didn't think about it until somebody said it yesterday, and, you know, I'm really proud of that fact, because it's hard to get horses good enough to come here. It's hard to get rides in these big races, so to have all three on my CV... I'm actually, you know, I'm quite proud of that, and you know, they can't take that off me. <laughs> you should be proud of it. Casual looks, Sir Percy, and now Pile Driver. I imagine Pile Driver must be very close to your heart. Yeah, he's, he's been frustrating at times, and um, he's, he's got tons of abilities we've just seen. And he, he got tired on his first run, and William kept telling me, "Don't worry, I'll have him right for Epsom." And to be fair to William and Chris and the team at home, they've done what they said they were going to do, and he was too fresh and too keen at Newmarket. But today, he was, he was different class, and. You know, it's all down to them. We can we can actually watch it right from the very start. So talk me through what you're thinking here. Well, I had a meeting with the owners and William yesterday. We decided we weren't going to take him back and try and settle him. I was just going to give him his head and let him roll along. And if that was in front, I'd be happy in front. So I was going to make the running, but when David took the running here and he was pressing on at a nice gallop and my fellow relaxed, so I said, OK, I'll just sit back in second and, and sort of try and control the race from second place. And that relaxation, that was a contrast to Newmarket, wasn't it? Exactly. Like I said, he, he was fresh and he, was, he, he got tired that day. He was too fresh and it was like a bottle of cog being shook up at Newmarket. <laughs> and I, I, I struggled with him. But today he was a different prospect and he just settled into a nice rhythm here. And I was, you know, all due respect to the horse in front, I, I thought he's not my danger. So I was happy to give him a bit of rope and try and control the race from, from back in second place. And were you always confident about the track? Because obviously things went wrong very early on in the derby last year, didn't they? They did. We couldn't take anything from last year's run because he got flattened at the top of the hill and it was game over. But when you've got a horse that travels as well as he does, and if you're holding on to them on the bridle on this track, that's a big plus. So I was quite comfortable. And what's the, what was the pace like at this stage? David slowed it up and I was conscious that I'll just give my horse a breather. And then and David really slowed it up here. We're on the mm. downhill stretch. I thought, you know what? I'm going to go past David and he'll fall into the laps of the ones behind. And I wanted to grab the rail because he can wander under pressure. And I thought if I grab the rail, then he can only come by me on one side. And once I got the rail, I was able to give him a, a nice breather. And Frankie started to press me without really pressing me. So I was just trying to save some petrol in case I got into a real scrap, which I did in the end. You were saying to Nick the other day that the rail isn't as straightforward on Oaks Day that it might be on Derby Day. Yeah, I've always found that because the they save, you can see on that picture there, they save about five metres on the inside. So we're actually racing on the steepest part of the camber and horses get really unbalanced on that. So that's why I was conscious with this fella to try and bag the rail and then keep him balanced on it. And Jim Crowley will come along at this point on in the Hamdan, the Shadwell colours in the blue colours. Does he ever ahead you? He did actually. Jim came to me. And uh, I could hear Jim come and Jim growls in the finish. Does he? <laughs> and he, he's, you know, he's not a dirty rider, but he's doing his best to win, and he gave me no room whatsoever. Jim's is a very good horse, and, and he was, you know, it was a real ding-dong battle, and I have to say, my horse was very brave. He's like a lion, isn't he? I mean, he's really knuckling down here. Oh, he was today. He was looking, and he pulled out all the stops, and he fought the runner-up off bravely, and we were a long way clear, and two very good horses in front. It was absolutely superb performance, and this is what William Yore wanted. He felt, and you did, that this was a Group 1 horse and he deserved his Group 1 chance. Yeah, because he'd won a couple of Group 2s very well and he'd beaten horses that have gone on to um, win Group 1s. He ran in the Champion Stakes last year, which didn't pan out, but we had Miss Rift behind us. So we, he has mixed it at the top level and we were always confident he'd win a Group 1 and, you know, fair play to all the team. And, there wouldn't be many trainers that turn up and drive their own horse in a horse box and win a Group 1, would there? <laughs> they probably wouldn't, but it's, it's very richly deserved by you and the whole team. Many, many congratulations, Martin, and thanks for giving us an insight to that race as well. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks.